Hello, has beans of the hotel, and welcome to another video. Today, we're cruising down to the Happy Hotel to get you some facts on the cutest princess that Disney doesn't own. That's right, today we're looking at the princess of hell herself, Charlie Mange. Charlie's been the title character, the protagonist of Has Been Hotel, since the pilot aired in 2019, about 4,000 years ago. And despite the show only having a pilot at the time of recording this, she has become the face of Vivzy Pop's entire lineup of shows, merchandise, and unyielding power over us. We all love Charlie, and it's time to finally crack open her backstory and take a look at what Vivzy might be hiding from us. So, Make sure to ring-a-ding that demon bell for that charming demon bell and entertain that subscribe button because we're coming at you every single day. So without further ado, from her singing to her hopes to her daddy issues, we're here to finally bring you 50 facts about Charlie Mage that you may or may not know. Right off the bat, Charlie is actually voiced by two different actresses. Jill Harris does her speaking voice and Elsie Lovelock is her singing voice. According to Vivzy Pop, Charlie is the third most powerful demon in all of hell, sharing a top ranking with her mother just above the Lords of Sin, such as Asmodeus and Mammon. Charlie is stated to be bisexual, preferring people on the whole length of the spectrum. Vivzy Pop has said that Charlie's design is based off of vaudeville acts and porcelain dolls, though she certainly doesn't seem to embody the true demonic power behind those dolls. Speaking of her family, Charlie is the daughter of Lucifer, yes, THE Lucifer, and Lilith, who is described in the Hebrew Bible as the primordial she-demon and first wife to Adam. I think Charlie wins the my parent could beat up your parent argument. Charlie is actually markedly tall, standing at about six feet in height. Not much when compared to Alistair and Angel Dust, but that is still a tall lady. According to Foss Tees, a former visual designer for Husband Hotel, Charlie, like her father, possesses hidden wings that she can unfurl and fly around with at any time. Charlie is fluent in English, as well as several demonic languages, which haven't been specified and hopefully will be specified because I NEED to hear someone speak demon. Aside from her wings, Charlie also has the ability of pyrokinesis, which she uses to set off fireworks to mark the end of exterminations and set people on fire. Charlie also appears to hold an ability that not many in shows like this do common sense. She's not naive and is immediately suspicious of Alistair when he first arrives at the hotel and immediately says nope when the terrifying glowing demon magic kicks in when he offers a handshake. Honestly, the smartest move I've seen in a cartoon. Her last name may be more of an ego stroke for her father than anything else. Mange, when used as a surname in French, means great. So they are literally Lucifer, Lilith, and Charlie the Great. Charlie has her two goats, as we all know, but those are actually her bodyguards named Razzle and Dazzle, who, according to Vivzy Pop, were given to her as a child, which is why they resemble plushie dolls. The Hyperhelion is apparently bad at keeping her train of thought, considering her list of talking points on 666 News includes unicorn kisses and dolphin high fives. And I know enough about dolphins to know that being anywhere near them is not a selling point. Charlie can sing, as we know, but apparently she has a bad habit of constantly singing, as pointed by Vaggie's pleading with her not to, and the fact that she's the only demon besides Alistair to actually just burst into song with no context. Charlie has a Voxtagram account name of at Hotel Mangement, upon the likes of which I could only hope to achieve in my lifetime. Charlie apparently only got her spot on 666 News to talk about the Happy Hotel because the spot was open after a cannibal cooking class was canceled. This is most likely why Alistair saw Charlie's fight with Katie Killjoy in the first place. He is a cannibal after all. Haha, <laughs> you like what I did there with the Alistair impression? <sighs> okay, horrible Alistair impression is horrible. Moving on. Charlie apparently dislikes going by Charlotte, her full first name, even in professional settings. Despite looking like one of the youngest demons in the main cast, other than Nifty, of course, Charlie is possibly the oldest of them all, having been born more than 200 years ago, already fully grown like she is now back in 1871. Charlie announces that the Happy Hotel is the first of its kind, which raises several questions as to why this wasn't tried before. Statistically speaking, someone should have tried this before. Despite being potentially thrown out by her parents in the starting scene of the pilot, Charlie still seems to have access to their funds, driving in a limo, owning a massive hotel, and being able to give money and stacks to people. 
as seen when she gave such to Angel Dust in the intro comic, Dirty Healings. Everybody knows her absolutely adorable relationship with Vaggy, but Charlie also has a nasty ex. Saviathan Von Eldritch, Charlie's ex-boyfriend, can be seen in a photo with Charlie at what might be a high school prom, and their families are seen in portraits together. This ex-relationship with Saviathan also seems to affect her relationship with his sister, Helsa Von Eldritch, whom Charlie calls a loser in Inside Every Demon is a Rainbow, and is definitely rivals with at least. Charlie possesses a demon form, like most sinners in Hell, though hers seems to be a bit more… powerful? I don't know how mangled she would have to become to get horns that big, but the fact that she summons fire when she only partially transforms gives some serious Dragon Ball Z vibes. Charlie actually shows up in Hell of a Boss's pilot as well, on Luna's computer screen, meaning either two hellhounds look almost identical, or somebody managed to record the cartoonish aspects of Charlie's song and post it to Helltube. Even though she's the princess of actual hell, Charlie seems to be horrified and downright traumatized by things like orphans with no limbs. That Roman crucifixion she witnessed, though? Pfft, totally fine. Despite being incredibly enjoyous and full of sparkles and love, Charlie is no pushover when she's finally insulted enough. Calling Katie Killjoy a bitch is one thing, but throwing fists and setting Tom Trench on fire for some reason is another. We covered earlier that Charlie can throw money around and get properties off her parents' names, but what really can fuddle that is the hotel. If she can afford the limo and the hotel, why is the lobby so run down? Why does the fridge not have enough power to keep popsicles from melting? It seems there's more to Charlie's money that meets the eye. Charlie apparently had a massive falling out with Lucifer over her idea for the hotel, especially with the line, maybe dad was right about me. Like, damn dude, your own daughter? I get he's the king of all things evil, but sheesh. Charlie seems to not have this problem with her mother, though, since she says she's constantly calling her mother with updates, despite the fact that she never picks up and apparently was involved in Charlie being kicked out of the house. An interesting thing to add to this idea, Charlie appears to have only hung up photos containing herself, her mother, or group photos, but none of just her father, the actual king. Charlie clearly doesn't enjoy pressing her authority, as she only does it once to keep the terrifying radio demon from making any evil deals with people and instead help the hotel. Even while doing this, a perfectly reasonable use of power, she still seems hesitant and uncomfortable with pulling rank. Along with her rank, being the third most powerful demon in hell thing apparently doesn't only mean political power. Alistair's handshake magic, for lack of a better term, nearly knocked Vaggy and Angel off their feet, but she remained unfazed. Either showing that Al has some kind of precise control of where a shockwave will travel, or that Charlie is well and truly beyond him in terms of magical power. Even though Charlie seems to, at the very least, dislike her father, she still apparently looks up to him in terms of advice and status. Charlie also seems to be a bit of a clutterbug, considering that the hotel is in such bad shape, and Nifty was able to fix a good portion of that in her first few seconds in the hotel. Maybe more of an idealist for design than a realist for work. Charlie seems to gravitate towards those who have a more… wrecked personality. She seems almost intimidated by Nifty at first, but Husker is someone she immediately tries to win over, despite his disinterest. Aside from her pyrokinesis and her demonic abilities, Charlie doesn't seem to hold any sway over real magic, and is clearly fascinated by such things given her wonderment at Alistair's tricks. Besides having a good singing voice, Charlie can also apparently tap dance. If her parents taught her that, I would honestly like to see how eventful their balls and galas would have to be. It appears that Charlie can become easily distracted, especially by cheery, upbeat tones. She has a problem with Alistair calling her hotel a joke in his normal voice, but seems to have no problem with continuous insults in musical form. Charlie's design has rosy cheeks, something usually representing a cheery, happy-go-lucky attitude, which she clearly has in spades, though she inherits this facial feature from her father, who is markedly… less cheery. Charlie is stated in a stream to enjoy frappuccinos, as if she couldn't get any sweeter. Despite her apparent falling out with Lucifer, Vizzy herself says Charlie takes a lot after him. If you need any reason as to why a happy-go-lucky soul like Charlie would be in hell, Fatis stated that she, like her parents, likes pineapple on pizza. <laughs> Charlie struggles with feelings of inferiority, even calling herself a failure in the intro song. 
Being the daughter of the king certainly doesn't help with that. Charlie's favorite book series is Harry Potter, which fits her more than I would have expected. Even in her unbreakable optimism, Charlie seems to have drops of doubt in her cause. She says in the intro song that she wonders if the world is to blame for her failure, if demons are just too evil. I'd certainly like to see that sprout. A tale of corruption is the most entertaining. Apparently, the pilot isn't the first time Charlie asks for a news spot with 666 News to discuss the hotel. As Katie mentions, she has been constantly harassing them for the time. Her family crest appears to be an apple, which is a little funny considering Lucifer and Lilith had to have been around for a long time before the apple incident even occurred. Charlie has apparently put her hotel right near the entrance of Hell itself, since the background around the hotel holds the only Welcome to Hell signs we've seen. Along with her dislike of pulling rank, Charlie seems to dislike punishment in general. According to Vivzy Pop, she treats her patients like children rather than demons in hell, and she doesn't really reprimand Angel Dust for trying to stick to his vices. Ironic considering she has childish ideas a lot of the time. And finally, Charlie apparently went to Angel Dust to be their first patient at the hotel because she saw something in him, whereas Vaggy says it's because nobody else would do it. What Charlie saw in him, I don't know. And that does it for this segment. Our 50 facts are up on the Peachy Princess. Did you learn something new? Did we miss something? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to tap dance to the sound of that bell and sing to that subscribe button. But for now... Uh, but for now... I, I spilled coffee on myself. And we'll see you next time! Why does it burn?